So in this video, we're going to talk about osmosis, or the passive transport of water. Water is kind of special because water is the solvent dissolving everything else, and so it is affected by the concentration of other particles uh, wherever they may be. So we're going to kind of represent all other particles as just sort of a generic term, solute. Remember that solutes dissolve in water. And so we're just going to kind of represent everything else as a solute, and we're going to pretend that anytime we ask you which way water moves, that those other particles themselves are impermeable, so it's impossible for them to cross the membrane. So if we represent these little triangles as solute particles, whatever they may be, it might be like a sugar or a salt, um, uh, we're going to say that they can't cross from their high to low direction. Only water can cross. And so how will water generally go? Well, we can start to think about this by thinking about you can either fill your space with water or solute. And so I hope it makes sense that if there's a high amount of solute here inside the cell, then there has to be a low amount of water um, because there isn't very much space for water. Whereas outside the cell here, there is a low amount of solute, and so there is a lot more space for water, and so there's a high amount of water. And so which way will the water go? Well, water will go from high to low concentration by coming into the cell. And so that's one way to think about it. Um, kind of once you start doing this, you'll see that there's kind of a shortcut. And we can say that generally water follows the solute. Wherever there's more solute, that's where water will move. Although I hope you can see that in this example, what we're really showing is that water itself is still moving from high to low concentration. So, just as another quick example, we could use our shortcut now and we can say, okay, there's more solute outside the cell in this picture, and so water will follow the solute by moving out. Um, just again to prove that to you really quickly, we can say that there's a low amount of solute in here, and so there must be a high amount of water. Um, but outside here, there is a, a high amount of solute, and so there must be a low amount of water. And so we're still going from high water to low water when the water's leaving the cell. Okay, so something else we'll want you to be able to do is to be able to use words to draw these pictures and then predict water movement. So you'll see that there are three words here, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. And the first thing to say is that um, all of these words are referring to the solute level in a particular area. Um, these uh, prefixes are often used in medical terms as well, so hypertonic, hyper means high. Sometimes I tell students if you're really hyper, you have really like high energy, for example. And so a hypertonic area would have a very high solute level in it. Um, hypo, on the other hand, is a root word meaning low. Sometimes I have students uh, think that hypo rhymes with low, and so a hypotonic area has a very low solute level. And finally, if two areas are isotonic to each other, iso means equal, like an isosceles triangle has two sides of equal length, for example. Okay, so if we were just to apply those terms really quickly to these examples, uh, we could see, say that the inside of the cell here is hypertonic because there is a higher solute inside, or we could say that the outside is hypotonic. So I hope you also realize that um, you, need to be, you need to specify which reason you're talking about. You can't just say it's hypertonic there. You have to say if you're talking about the inside or the outside. Um, just another quick example, we could say that it's hypotonic inside here because I'm really having trouble with my ends here. Um, there is a lower solute level inside, or you could say that it's hypertonic here outside because there is a higher solute outside. Okay, um, so why does this matter in real life? Because uh, the movement of water could really uh, determine the health of cells. Uh, for example, our animal cells, our red blood cells, um, uh, really need an isotonic solution outside. We, our body works really hard to make sure there's about an equal amount of solute inside and outside so that water goes equally in and out and keeps them the right shape because if it got too salty outside of our blood cells, then uh, we would lose water and shrivel, those cells would shrivel up and die. But on the other hand, if it gets too watery outside our blood cells, that can also be a problem. If all the solutes in our blood cells, then water rushes in and those cells might blow up. 
And so this is important for medical purposes because when we're rehydrating patients, we don't want to just put water through an IV tube directly into their bloodstream. We actually give them a saline solution. So notice here that it says that it's about a 0.9% solution of salt or sodium chloride. Um, that's about what an isotonic solution is in our body. Um, and plant cells, on the other hand, are a little bit different. They also still die or shrivel up um, when there's too much solute, if it's hypertonic outside their cells because water rushes out following the solute and causes them to shrivel up. Um, so just another example that nobody likes hypertonic environments is think about the Dead Sea. Um, the, the Dead Sea is called that because it's so salty there that really no life can live there. Everybody shrivels up. Um, but plant cells don't really want it isotonic either. They actually prefer it to be hypotonic outside. So maybe there's more solute in the cells so that water is incentivized to rush in. And why is that helpful for them? Because they have a cell wall that protects them from blowing up. And in fact, what that water does as it rushes in is it kind of pushes against the cell wall and it creates a water pressure that actually helps plants stand straight up. Um, especially plants that don't have woody stems. So we tried to talk in this video a little bit about the general rule. We can say that in osmosis, water always goes towards the area of greater solute, and that might be really important for certain cells to help them maintain homeostasis.